There's a couple regions of the world famous for their premium cabins. We tried a good bunch of Middle Eastern first class products last year like Qatar, Emirates, and Etihad. Today we're in Hong Kong to try out my first East Asian first class. Singapore and Al Nippon are some of the world's more famous products, but one that's a bit less widespread is the first class product on board Cathay Pacific, the airline representing Hong Kong. As always, timestamps will be down below. Now the Hong Kong airport is going through loads of construction to grow, but we're in Terminal 1 which houses the check-in for Cathay Pacific amongst other airlines. This early there was very few lines, but for the first class check-in, I was literally the only person. I know it's exclusive, but there was three flights departing in the next few hours with first class cabins, including ours to Beijing. Check-in was easy, however, with someone coming to take my bag for me and check it, while another agent got my boarding pass and lounge access, which denoted the three lounges that we'll have access to here in Hong Kong. The back of the check-in area is where we find security checkpoints and a food court. I have to assume there's a priority security and immigration for first-class passengers somewhere, but I was unable to find it, so after about 10 minutes, we were through the normal security and into the terminal. Now there's actually two first-class lounges here, and while I would have loved to spend more time in each of them, they didn't open until 5.30, and we boarded at 8.30. So let's do a little bit of lounge hopping and see which one we prefer. The first of the two lounges is known as The Wing. Through immigration and immediately to the left, we find the entrance to the first class lounge. There's a separate entrance and section of the lounge for business class passengers. Now this is the older of the two lounges, opening in the late 90s around when services moved here from the famous Kai Tak airport. Since then, the lounge saw a renovation roughly 10 years ago. There's a whole lot of seating, the first room with couches around the center champagne bar, which was self-serve with a few types of sparkling wine. The walkway on either side of the lounge takes us to the next room. The majority of the seating with giant comfy chairs, charging ports, and only lacking tables in my opinion. The back of this section also has a great bar for people wanting something besides champagne. Continuing our walk past the workstations and printers we reach the buffet. Here we see breakfast items at the moment with pastries, cold items, hot items, and at the very end was a tea bar. There was a menu that showed the tea choices and then you could get them to prepare a pot of it for you. There was definitely more tables here for people wanting to eat, both around a table or at a counter. Next to the buffet is also a sit-down restaurant, and while I wasn't able to shoot footage of the restaurant, you can see the food items available here on the menu. From here, you can actually walk around the corner to the business class lounge, consisting of coffee bars, noodle bar, and more. Great to have more variety while maintaining the first class lounge for a bit more privacy. Now the absolute best thing about the Wing First Class Lounge is the Cabana Suites. Luckily, they were all available at this early hour, but there's five Cabana Suites available to first class passengers. These suites are by far one of the best lounge spaces I've come across in my travels. Walking in, the first door is an enclosed toilet area. Around the corner from that is a vanity space with large mirror, sink, amenities, and towels. If you need a desk or maybe a vanity space without the sink, you can also use the counter along the side wall. Next to that is the closets with coat hangers, bathrobes, and slippers. The other closet being used to get things ironed while you get ready. Hitting the button, then hanging up what you need ironed, and they can take it and bring it back through their own door. There's also this large bench, which was comfortable, but mostly for people wanting to rest up before their flight. If you want to relax a little bit more before your flight, there's also a large bathtub for you to chill in. But if baths aren't your thing, there's also this giant open shower. All in all, one of the best lounge spaces that I've come across in any lounges I've visited around the world, and I'm bummed that I didn't have more time to enjoy it if I still wanted to check out the newer of the lounges. I thought this lounge was really nice, although maybe a bit smaller than the world's other first class lounges. The open to terminal setup also gives us great natural light during the daytime, something we didn't really get until we were leaving. I was offered a cart to drive me to my gate or the other lounge, but I declined to allow myself to explore on foot a bit. Possibly a mistake as we had a much longer walk than I originally anticipated. We did get to see some of the items around the Hong Kong airport, starting with the garden. It was a nice outdoor space, except it was almost unusable due to it basically just becoming a smoker's area. Bummer to not get to see the light show though. 
There were also these screens where you could order food and have it brought to you while you sat down at one of the tables. Past the slides and down the corridor is what they call the Sky Bridge. As a way to reach the satellite terminal, you can get these great views of the ramp areas and surrounding terrain. Much better than an underground corridor or train system in my opinion. You can also get great views of planes taxiing directly below your feet. Finally, we reach the end where the terminal splits into a Y. Fortunately, the wing with our gate also houses the newer of the lounges. This one is known as the Pier. The Pier opened in 2015 and also has separate spaces for first and business class passengers, with the business class entrance at gate 65 and the first class entrance at gate 63. All we gotta do is take the escalator downstairs to check out this first class lounge. Welcome to quite possibly the most beautifully designed first class lounge in the world. The hallways, artwork, and supplemental decor makes an extremely cozy space. I felt weird with it being downstairs, but honestly the views from the windows weren't too bad with great views of the ramp. There's a few rooms off that main central hallway. First is the pantry, which is basically the buffet for this lounge. Slightly different selection, but good for quick items or something to drink. At one end of the hallway is the full service bar. There wasn't too many people there considering it was still about 7 in the morning. That did mean there was plenty of seats at least, all cozy with excellent use of textures and colors throughout. Then was another room full of seating. They do a great job of partitions and rooms to allow for a good amount of seating without it feeling like there's a ton of people overcrowding. At the other end of the main hallway is the sit-down dining option for this lounge. Much like in the wing, it's included in the cost of your ticket and appeared to be the same menu. This is where I decided to eat my breakfast. I got a table for one and ordered the Chinese set plate with an apple kale wellness drink and a coffee. It was all super tasty and although it wasn't a ton of food, I wanted to save some room for that onboard meal as well. Further down the central hallway, the next branch is called the Bureau and has a collection of workspaces. They aren't soundproof, but they are private and come with space to get work done. Across from that is the Retreat Spa as they referred to it. Passengers can get complimentary massage services, day rooms for resting up, and shower suites. Of course, after the cabanas in the wing, I had to see the shower suites in here in the pier. While they are excellent spaces to freshen up, it's nothing compared to the cabanas that we just checked out. I'm curious on which lounge you guys prefer though. Personally, I think the pier may be one of my all-time favorite lounges. The only thing that can make it better in my opinion is if they had the same cabana style retreats and bonus points if they're able to get views of the beautiful surrounding terrain. I guess the mix between the two lounges makes some great spaces to hang out, if only I had more than two and a half hours to explore. The goal of today's video was to check out the best possible product on Cathay Pacific. If you want the best product for your internet experience, you'll want to check out the sponsor of today's video, NordVPN. I'm reporting to you live from a small sweaty hotel room in Bangkok, and on this trip I've spent a lot of time in airports connected to public internet connections. The problem with those is that it becomes a lot easier for people with bad intentions to steal your online data. Thanks to NordVPN though, I've been protected. Using NordVPN, all of my online data is routed through their encrypted servers, essentially adding a brick wall of defense between me and potential hackers everywhere that I've been on this trip. Since using NordVPN, the number of fishy emails or weird advertisements that I've gotten on my devices has gone way down. And that's because I don't only have it on my computer, you can use it on your phone or your tablet as well. Perfect for these trips around the world where I could potentially be exposed to a number of unsafe connections, but find myself protected with NordVPN. And if you aren't sold on it just yet, the icing on the cake is that you can use it to keep yourself entertained around the globe as you can connect to another country's server to access different content libraries across different streaming services, regardless of what country you might be in at the time. To keep yourself safe at home or around the world, use my link nordvpn.com slash patrickshay to get four months free when you purchase a two-year plan, and you can rest assured with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Safe travels, y'all. Let's head back to Hong Kong and this first-class cabin.
That's enough exploring for now though, because it's time for us to head to the gate, where our 777 had just arrived from Brisbane, Australia. This 13 or so year old 777-300 has been with Cathay Pacific for its entire lifetime despite a couple years being stored during the COVID times. Gate 60 is going to be ours for Beijing and one of the main reasons I knew that is because when I got here there was already swarms of people. Here's some shots I got on my way to the lounge however. You'll see that Cathay Pacific has queues set up for first business and economy class. A lot of people were in the wrong queue, so they had to go through and sort that out a bit. We also had a roughly 25 minute delay to boarding just due to waiting for the green light from the crew. Finally, we were able to get on board, and it was kind of fun being the first person on board. We got a good look at that 111 configuration that makes up the six person capacity first class on Cathay Pacific, a cabin found only on a select handful of their 777s. Being the first on board meant that we had plenty of time to explore the seat. So let's take a look. Along the aisle is a privacy partition. Between that and the wall on the other side of the aisle, privacy was never an issue. There's also a part of the seat that can be lowered into an armrest or a smaller counter of sorts for a drink. You might think it's kind of a bummer to take away that space from the seat, but you'll see here that the seat's wide enough to fit two people somewhat comfortably. The headrest is really just a pillow. I'm sure some people would prefer an adjustable headrest, but I thought this was innovative and super comfortable. Below the reading light is the countertop below the windows. There is this first section which contains a little cubby only big enough really for chargers or amenities. There's also a remote and the controls for all the parts of the suite, which goes along well with the shortcut buttons on the side panel. Then was a big old countertop. This space was great for my computer while I was eating, being plenty large enough for whatever you need to spread out with. Speaking of eating, the tray table comes out of the side counter and is more than big enough for you and maybe one or two more place settings. Above that is the four windows at the seat, if you include the one partially over my shoulder. Basically, you could see everything I wanted to see, although it was a little bit of a bummer to have an empty flower holder. Below the countertop is the charging ports, both USB and universal. The footrest is huge, so huge in fact that they've made it into another seat so that in cruise another first class passenger can come join you. The TV is next to that, but just due to the seat setup it's in kind of a funky spot. Fortunately, with the click of a button, it can slide out into a much better location. There's more storage below that, a good spot for a water bottle and a slot for like a laptop or other things. And if you need more space than that, on the edge of the seat you'll notice this little door. You can fit a lot in here. It looks sized to fit carry-on roller boards, but also has hangers and fit everything that I had on me with room to spare. This is especially helpful since there aren't any overhead bins whatsoever in the first two rows of the aircraft to help make the cabin feel a little bit larger, similar to the first class cabin of Emirates for example. As for the amenities, starting with the bedding, it's slightly reduced being that this is a shorter all daytime flight. For starters, we have this blanket that kind of feels like a sweatshirt, just with a little less fluff. Then the pillow, which is larger than my bed pillow at home. But if you still wanted more than this, you can also use the accent pillow. This is all in addition to the pillow that is the headrest, so plenty of head cushion options. Then we got these noise cancelling headphones and y'all I am not exaggerating when I say these are the best headphones I have ever used. Absolutely incredible noise cancelling and super super comfortable. As for pre-departure beverages, as soon as I sat down they brought this tray including a hot towel and some sparkling rose tea along with this handwritten note from the crew. Absolutely excellent touch. Then one of the other crew members said it looked like I needed another refreshment and brought me a healthy glass of champagne and a bowl of nuts. Then the much more average drink, just a bottle of water. Now let's talk cost. Just to be clear, there are quite a few East Asian carriers offering first class. From the multiple Chinese carriers, to the Japanese carriers, Asiana, Malaysia, Singapore, etc. Throughout aviation, however, Cathay Pacific's first class has held its own for quite a while. It was seen on a multitude of their premium routes, including multiple routes across continents. It's a little bit sad to see only part of the first class remaining. Specifically, I wanted to look into the cost of this product. 
If you've watched my videos, you know that I try to take flights out of hubs to get the flagship experience, but I also try to fly one of the longer routes to make sure I can experience as much of the airline as possible. This flight was an example of when it would have been great to be a millionaire. You see, this product does fly to a couple places in the US and Europe, which was what I wanted to do. I looked at flights to London, Paris, New York, Los Angeles. The cost of all these flights? Roughly $15,000 one way. Honestly, that's fairly normal for these routes. All Nippon, China Eastern, and others charge similar costs for one way first class products. Products that typically aren't bookable with points. So it's not like this cost is out of the ordinary, just out of my range. That would be over triple the most expensive flight I've ever purchased and on a pilot's income, it's a bit out of reach. Instead, they have multiple flights per day between Hong Kong and Beijing with first class, all for under 1500 US dollars. I was definitely bummed with not being able to experience the product on one of the longer routes for the full experience, but I figured that at least for the time being, this is the closest we're gonna get to that full experience and I'm gonna bask in all three hours of it. super abbreviated look at the entertainment options since that's not what this video is about, but I was impressed with Cathay's selection. I guess it just kind of makes sense, they do fly all over the world so therefore they need to have selections from all over the world. Each genre with a whole lot of selections and the TV shows have like half seasons. With a selection this large, I also appreciate the ability to add things to your favorites, making it easier to find later on. Then the Wi-Fi. Cathay Pacific does offer Wi-Fi on their long-haul aircraft and can be purchased in a couple different capacities. When scrolling through the different packages, you'll see the one for first-class passengers that comes at no cost. For first-class passengers and first-class passengers only, we can get Wi-Fi for the whole flight for completely free. Looking at the speed test as well, I was shocked to see just how good that Wi-Fi was. We were given two menus, one for beverages and one for food. I then realized I didn't actually get any pictures or footage before they took them back, but we're gonna get one meal shortly after departure, a brunch meal. The meal that I chose came in courses. First up was the fruit plate with a bread basket and the latte that I ordered. I will say that it's the first time I've ever seen lime on a fruit plate before. Then was a yogurt parfait. The granola was actually really good but a weird ratio with not a ton of yogurt. Then was the main course, which was congee and dim sum. I didn't realize until I was eating it that this is exactly the same meal I had in the lounge, but I'm convinced that you can't have too much dim sum. And then to wrap up our breakfast, we were given one more hot towel and a toothpick. I do enjoy looking around the lavatories of first class cabins, considering most airlines will decorate it a little bit more special or give more amenities. 
I didn't find this one to be too special, although I did like the fake wood design. They did give us a couple of extra amenities, but my favorite parts were instead of paper towels, they gave us actual hand towels. And then, even though it's small, the sink. Instead of being automatic, you could press the button to turn it on and off so it didn't turn off while your hands were all soapy. I also had to get a feel for the bed, even if I wasn't going to sleep on these flights. It's fairly easy with one of the two controls to put it into a bed. One of the best features I noticed while reclining is that the extra panel making the seat a bit wider moves with the main part of the seat to make one giant surface. I only got to lay down for about a minute or two before we were preparing for landing which sucks because this thing was comfortable. I'm sure I'd sleep like a baby on a longer flight. Once upon a time, Cathay Pacific actually had over 30 777s with the first class configuration. During the pandemic days, Cathay had to store their 777s with first class since there wasn't much business travel, the main use of the first class cabin. In 2022, they began bringing these planes back into service. At one point, there was over 10 daily flights to the US alone with first class cabins. Now only Los Angeles, and as of today, New York, have the first class product. Although it sounds like San Francisco is another city that we might see soon. Earlier this year, Cathay announced a new business class for their 777-300s, which will be known as the Aria Suites. They look incredible and a great upgrade to the current hard product on board these aircraft. It seems like these upgrades will remain on only the 777-300s. It should also be said that the 777-300s will only see the business class upgrade with no announced plans to upgrade the first class product on these aircraft. Instead, Cathay placed an order for 21 777-9s way back when. These aircraft should start showing up next year and Cathay has plans for a new first class product dubbed the Halo Suites, making them one of many airlines planning to make the 777X their flagship aircraft. While we don't know what they'll look like officially, we do have some sketches and some ideas of what their goals are. First off is a single aisle first class allowing extra wide seats. On that note, also most likely four suites, or two double suites that could resemble something more like the Etihad residence in a way with a double bed and private lavatory even. It also sounds as if one idea includes the option for passengers with children to add a bunk with a ladder so that one suite could fit maybe three people. Regardless of the direction they head with these airplanes, there's some very ambitious goals, and with new aircraft on the way, I think we are all very excited to see those plans come to fruition, and all very terrified to see what they're priced at. We're going to reflect on this flight while our captain tries to find that center line. When you're flying a first class product, you should be able to tell that you've got a better overall experience than business class. It should feel more indulgent. It should include more perks. You should have more privacy and even get to customize the experience to be best tailored to you. Examples like this are what really makes a great first class product. To this day, the best example I have of this is from my video on Garuda Indonesia's first class from a few months ago. Cathay Pacific's first class does a great job at most of these things. I did enjoy how quick the check-in was at the airport, but I didn't see any expedited security and immigration unless I was missing something. In the airport, I thought their two lounges were some of the best I've ever experienced. The only critique I had is that the slight shortcomings of one lounge were fixed with the other. It feels like they have two lounges, each at 90% perfect, rather than one 100% perfect lounge. But I guess that's what you get when you have an airport the size of Hong Kong and probably want more than one lounge. Now on board, I will say that I found the seats to be super comfortable and private. 
It's true, they do look a bit aged, but I guess that just makes their new upcoming renovation even more exciting. Personally, I feel like the experience definitely felt better than a business class experience, but not quite as top tier as the other first classes. For this reason, on the short flight to Beijing, it's a great way to travel. I'd have trouble justifying the ten dollars to $20,000 price tag on one of the North American or European routes in this seat, however. Or any other seat, for that matter. I guess that's how they keep it exclusive, though. Let me know what your thoughts are on Cathay Pacific's first class product, and how it compares to the others in the world and in its region. Until next Sunday, safe travels, I'll see y'all next time.